Hamas isn't the target, they're the excuse. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. If you're just tuning in, Israeli intelligence ignored mountains of information that the October 7th attack was coming and left Israelis completely undefended. Then the IDF killed significant numbers of Israelis with indiscriminate fire and pinned the blame for 100% of Israeli deaths on Hamas. And all those deaths are now being used as justification to push Gazans off their land to the south and shoot them if they try to return, while Israeli officials keep talking about how great it would be to get all Palestinians out of all of Gaza. Such a crazy coincidence how every single step of Israel's military operations against Hamas in Gaza has looked exactly the same as what you'd expect to see if Israel was trying to permanently drive Palestinians off a large stretch of Palestinian land. This isn't a war against Hamas. It isn't a war at all. It's a military operation to facilitate an ethnic cleansing. Hamas aren't the targets. They're the excuse. There's a video of satellite footage showing the absolute destruction wall-to-wall -wall of Gaza. Commentary by Caitlin. Israel isn't bombing Gaza with the intention of wiping out Hamas. Israel is bombing Gaza with the intention of wiping out Gaza. A New Guardian article says Israel's military estimates it has killed between 1,000 and 2,000 Hamas fighters out of a military force it believes is about 30,000 strong. If Hamas was using human shields as we've been told, killing civilians should also yield a huge amount of Hamas fatalities, since Hamas would be hiding among civilians. Yet the IDF has managed to kill massive numbers of civilians while barely touching Hamas. Maybe they're just lying about human shields. The whole argument for displacing Gazans from the north to the south was to protect their lives. Yet now if they try to return to the north, they get shot and killed by Israeli forces. What's the new argument for this one? Are they killing them to save their lives? Tweet by Max Blumenthal. Israel didn't even bother painting Gaza's Indonesian hospital as a covert Hamas base. It just bombed it to oblivion, tortured its staff, and left it strewn with rotting corpses. This report is one of the most gut-wrenching documents I've seen of Israel's state terror. Tweet by Caitlin. Find someone who loves you the way Israelis love murdering hospital patients and children. Saying Gaza isn't occupied because Israel withdrew in 2005 is the same as saying a prisoner is free because the warden isn't technically inside his jail cell with him. Whenever I say Israel is deliberately killing civilians, half the Israel apologists in my comments are like, No, they're not, you damn liar! And the other half are, Yes, they are, and it's good. Tell an Israel supporter that Israel is a racist apartheid state, and they'll deny it. Point to the tiered social system and the oppression of Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank, and they'll tell you it's because Palestinians are all ape-like savages who can't behave themselves. Tweet by Antiwar.com Ukrainian official confirms Russia was ready to end war in March of 2022 if Kyiv agreed to neutrality. In non-Gaza-related news, the leader of President Zelensky's party in the Ukrainian parliament has officially confirmed what many of us have been slandered and smeared for saying for months, that there was a peace deal in the works in the early days of the war in Ukraine if Kyiv would just commit to Ukrainian neutrality, but the deal was abandoned under pressure from Western powers. If you're ever accused of being a Russian propagandist for pointing out obvious evidence of Western malfeasance in Ukraine, don't worry. Wait long enough and a Ukrainian official will eventually come out and prove you right by saying exactly what you said. And now Washington is starting to push Kyiv to negotiate an end to the fighting while Ukraine's commander-in-chief calls the war a stalemate. Ukraine will surely wind up having to relinquish a lot more than it otherwise would have if it had been allowed to take the peace deal offered at the beginning of the conflict. All that death and destruction. For what? For nothing. It was all pointless. 
an entire generation of young men thrown into the war machine and pointless bloodshed, which could have easily been avoided except for the U.S. Empire's desire to bleed Russia and advance its geostrategic objectives in Europe and Asia. From Ukraine to Gaza, the U.S. Imperial War Machine makes everything worse. <laughs>